Hey guys, so today is another inexpensive gear oriented shave. We have a nice cheap little Omega brush. I think it's the 80266. It's kind of a bunch of random numbers that I haven't been able to memorize yet. It's in the description of the video and maybe even the title. I have had it soaking for a few minutes. It is a bore brush and we need to soak that. The fat handle tech. This one has the Gillette logo, kind of uh, reverse uh, etched into the top cap there. More on that model later. Inside of it, we're going to put a 7 o'clock super stainless. Yep, that's what it is. Can't remember if that's the green, you know, I can't remember which color it is. I think I've just used it one, one time. And then the soap is a sample I've had for a little bit. Looking forward to trying it out. Black Cherry. I'm a big fan of that type of scent. So that'll be fun. And it's from Sterling Soaps. And I've already got a quarter teaspoon out and that's going to be plenty. That's enough for six or seven passes usually with Sterling. And so uh, I probably should have gotten a little bit less, but that's all right. Um, so let's put the blade in the razor and all that stuff. So the tech is just a tremendous razor. It's been used for so long by so many guys out there by different beard types it's a mild razor but it'll cut thick beards the uh, handle in some of the later models the head rather and the uh, some of the handles and stuff is the uh, Zamac and so if you're looking for the old kind of brass kind you may want to do some research just to make sure I think it's somewhere sometime in the 60s they uh, started maybe making some, maybe they had a little bit of a hard time, so they, they weren't able to do the brass. Um, here's the base plate, and that's important with Tex in the sense of, see this diamond here? And uh, that means it's a common U.S. tech, and uh, sometimes this will be flat, and so that will be a flat bottom tech. They usually, those are from the U.K. Now, another thing mainly that you look at is the shape of these four holes right here these four slots and they are capsule shaped or rat you know uh, they're parallel except for rounded on the ends and that means it is a post-war Gillette tech and if it were a pre-war then this inside wall here would form a peak it would be a peak right there on all four on all four holes so the shape of those holes will tell you a little bit about the date now, of course, we can also check the bottom of the base plate. This does have a note, W2. W2. Oh, hey, this one's Canadian. How about that? All right, Canadian tech. So we'll see how that one goes. Now, the fat handle... It's a blessing and a curse for me. I look so much forward when I bought my first fat handle tech to using it. I was disappointed when I actually held it because it's hollow. And so the balance point is way up here close to the head. Now when you're using it, I don't I do lose track of the weight, and so it's fine when I'm using it. I've also heard some people will um, pour some stuff in there to give the bottom of it some weight. Might be an interesting thing to try sometime. Uh, I don't know if people put, I think somebody put like BBs or bearings or something in there and then they poured wax on the top of it to kind of seal them and keep them from moving around, you know, things like that. All right, so the blade is in there. It's nice and secure. It's never going to move. You don't have to adjust it because of those four corner posts. Always keep it perfectly aligned. And we will now press the black cherry sample. And this is Sterling's sample size, and it's often enough to shave for a whole month. And so if you buy 
just think about it. Let's say you buy six samples from Sterling. They're about $3 a piece plus some shipping. Then that is six months of shaving. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? And then you get to go bounce back and forth between the pucks, have a little variety. Pretty cool deal. Uh, this is not cheap. Uh, 3D printed lather bowl. But, you know, we can't have everything cheap all the time. It's a nice firm soap. It comes out pretty easily in one big. And it's even a little bit resistant to squeezing. And a little goes a long way. A 5.8 ounce tub of sterling. When I bowl lather, which helps me to conserve lather, it doesn't waste as much going down the drain on that first pass if you face lather. Um, a puck of sterling will last me 13 months according to usage tests that I did. But most people will use three or four times as much soap as I do if they're face latherers. And that's the way they like it, and that's okay. It's kind of nice because even if you use a puck every three months, you're going through your soap a little quicker. And, you know, $13 for three months of soap, three months of lather is, uh, you know, still pretty reasonable. Okay, so the soap is spread on the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to get my face wet, and the, uh, we'll start working the brush on the soap. I usually do this. I usually wet my face before I start working on my lather, and that is my pre-shave routine. I don't do a pre-shave oil or cream or product of any kind. I just do water. It seems to work just fine for my skin. And I do it right before the lather because then the water sitting on my face serves to soften my hairs, get my skin ready to receive the soap and all that stuff. Let's tilt you down so you can watch the lather come together a little easier. And I don't have to hold the bowl up to my chin. And I like to use this little medicine syringe to add water to the soap. And for you new guys, I'm not using it to, to start from the beginning to, with a mind to only use a certain amount of water. I'm just using it because by squeezing it just a little bit, I can get a few drops. Or I can put a whole teaspoon of water into the lather at once. When I am adding water to the the bowl here, I often add in teaspoon or half teaspoon increments. But when I am adding water to a brush, when I'm in the middle of the shave, then I don't, you can't put that much in a brush. It'll all just wash right out. So maybe a quarter of a teaspoon or a few drops or whatever. And the syringe is, syringe is adequately, perfectly suited for either quantity. That's coming together nicely. Look at that texture. It's you know how it's not notice how it's not moving. It's got some ridges and peaks. That means it needs more water, at least if you like your lathers as hydrated as I like mine. Two teaspoons are now in the lather. That cherry scent is coming up. Three teaspoons now. You do see the thumb rest right here, but
but to be honest, I don't use that very much because this is such a light bowl that there's there's nothing kind of keeping the bowl in my hand. And so it's a little, little floppy. Plus, I like to show you guys what I'm doing. And I've got big hands anyway, and so I just, I'm glad this flange is around the bottom of the bowl. And I just use that to hold the bowl. But that little thumb rest there also doubles as a brush rest. And I have yet to find a brush that doesn't fit in there. Now we're starting to look better. Now take a look at the surface of the lather. Even if I try to make a peak, that's a whole lot different than the surface I showed you a minute ago where there were so many ridges and pointy peaks and uh, stalagmites and things like that. So that's a visual cue as you can learn what the lather looks like along the way because you may have a different stop point that, than I do. You may like your lather drier or even wetter than I do. So learn to watch for different things. We're kind of looking at the elasticity here. Now look, it's still kind of holding itself up. Still got some structure to it, but we're getting close. Yeah, it's a nice wild cherry scent. Let's add another whole teaspoon. The other day I used sterling, and I had forgotten how much water it could take. And I ended up having to add quite a bit to the second pass. Yeah, how awesome it was, how it would still stay creamy, even if you added just a ton of water in it. To me, that's a marking of a good soap. It's a marking of a kind of soap that I like. And as you can see, the soap's not really sticking to the walls in a shelf type of formation. It has collapsed down for the most part. My other Omega brushes are a lot more hard to break in than this little guy. This one's actually behaving much like a Samogue. It, and I don't know if that's atypical or typical for this kind of brush, but it, it's comfortable, it's soft, it's easy to splay, it's, and that is totally the opposite of the other Omega brushes that I, that I have. Some of them are just so ornery that I'm just not interested in giving them more of my time because I've got a ton of Samoog brushes that feel great. I've got a ton of Badger brushes that feel great. My Zeniths feel great. So why, you know, let's say, and this is reasonable. What if it took 300 uses before, you know, one of my Omegas started to get really soft and split and break in and all that stuff? And, and, and that's supported by forum research that I've done. Well, that's a whole lot of junk to wade through before you get to something good. When, like I just said, the makes I just told you about are already there. So those stubborn omegas, because I'm a guy who likes comfort. Now, if you like to be scrubbed and you like a little bit of scritch in your brush and all that. So that's six teaspoons now then Omega, I think, is your, it's probably going to be your brush of choice. See, now look, it is just, look how elastic that is. You see how long that peak was? That's what I'm talking about right there. And as I said, look how much we generated. That's from a quarter teaspoon, a slightly rounded quarter teaspoon. 
And so I could definitely and should have probably reduced that because it would have been quicker to build up this lather. Would have been quick. We wouldn't be at the 15 minute mark um, to get to a good lather if I would have used a little bit less soap. It still would have been just as creamy, just as enjoyable, just as luxurious. But we would have gotten there quicker. All right. Black cherry. Hey, you know what? Here's a scent that we could mix with a tobacco scent, right? But of course, we already have a bunch of cherry pipe tobacco scents out there. So I don't guess we need to do that. First pass is, with my skin at least, having to deal with those skin oils. And if you do wash your face beforehand, you're not going to have that issue. So my first pass is often a different experience than the second and third. Yeah, see, I'm glad I kept adding water. Kind of a massagey feel because... Not all the tips have split by any means, so this has still got a ways to go. But at least it splays easily. It's soft in this kind of painting motion, you know, most, most brushes are. There we go. A little short handle, pretty basic, but it, it's good in the right ways. Um, it works, for my hands at least. All right, Tech, let's see how you do with this super stainless from, uh, what is it, Gillette 7 o'clock? Since the Tech is a mild razor, now it's not super mild. If you want milder, go for the Testina Gentile from Fatip. Very closed comb version they have. It is super smooth. The Timeless 68. Of course now we're getting into expensive razors. Timeless 68 scalloped or solid bar is super smooth to me. But this is a nice, nice razor. And the, man, the stories these old techs could tell from maybe a Simple country grandpa in the middle of nowhere, just shaving every day to somebody in some trench in some war. A little bit of blade feel, and that's good because that's the kind of feel that's going to be able to cut through any of that hard stubble that, I, that we were talking about. This does seem to be a good match for this razor, for my skin at least. A comfortable shave, a nice consistent feel. Doesn't feel tenuous or unpredictable in any way. And let's rinse. All right. Load up the brush again, and this is a bore brush that doesn't have a big bloom yet. And so I'm hoping to make sure I get lather into the middle of it by pressing down into the bowl, enough to maybe splay the first third of the bristles, the tips there, just so we get it, oh, and get water out of the goatee. My goatee is long enough now where that water can be problematic if I don't get it out of there. So this is all basic stuff. I'm pretty sure this brush is under $15. I just saw on eBay a tech for $7. And if you get one that's made of brass in the middle, then you're talking about something that's going to last your lifetime. Something that's probably already lasted a generation before you. And it's definitely going to be around a generation after you.
tremendous razors here. And then this Sterling soap is a terrific deal if you are really focused on using up soap slowly and you know making the getting really the best bang for your buck. Then learn to use a lather bowl. And you don't have to get like a $30 or $40 one that I'm using here with the 3D printing. Um, this is $1 at the Dollar Tree, and it's a great lather bowl. Nice cut. Nice close shave. Sometimes I take that excess lather and I just, at the end of the shave, I've started just a little bit of massage. I mean, it just feels good, the slick lather, you know. Don't know if it is any benefit for my skin, but it just feels good to kind of, you take your wet hand and you do that and that kind of re-energizing the remnant of soap that's still on your skin. And rinse. All right. Plenty. Of lather still like we gathered before now this is the third pass and even on the second pass this right here is all you really need to do but I just kind of enjoy the feel of the brush especially with these bores I want to give it some more action help those tips to split before I finally kind of lay down the the final layer here. And so if you do get a bowl, if, because you want to really maximize your, your lathers, then you can, like me, you can get that 5.8 ounce tub of sterling to last a year at least nine months but if, if you use about 0.4 grams per shave like I apparently did then you are looking at about 13 months of shaves how about that I am getting a little bit of irritation in one spot on my neck here. I think maybe I got a little too fast or something like that. I'm, uh, so we got the massage going on here. I'm, I'm able to kind of feel around for the lather. How, what kind of slickness is it giving me? I'm also able to feel for any sections that I may want to touch up, that sort of thing. And there we go. Man, I mean, I love all my different DEs, and I love my modern ones. I love my Timeless and my Carve, uh, my Wolfman, my Fatipes. Now, there's another budget razor. As a matter of fact, I may try to use that tomorrow. I specifically uh, keep one of those here at this location for, uh, for use, and it is a tremendous. It's along the same lines as, as these guys. It is brass core plated with uh, chrome or something to that effect and so it, it like these is a lifetime quality thing um, however every once in a while you'll see a fatip i think there was a certain uh, time range where they had kind of low quality issues quality control and they would let out some with misaligned you know bits and things like that and i but i've heard from other people who have had no alignment issues at all so it was kind of hit or miss there. Um, I have several. I've managed to come across several Fatip razors, and all of them shave well. And uh, and so uh, they are twenty five to twenty eight dollars, roughly. And uh, you can get the open comb version or the uh, closed comb. The closed comb is the Gentile, Testina Gentile, and it as well. That's funny. I didn't ever really put this parallel together. It has, just like the tech, it's got a light hollow handle called the Grande. And it's got a thinner but solid handle, 
just like the tech has the ball end handle. It has the, the Fatip has the piccolo handle, which is equivalent to the tech's ball end handle. The tech's fat handle is equivalent to the Fatip grande handle. So that's, that's funny. I never thought about that. And something new that I learned over on one of the internet forums, there's a special club, a little, a little section of the forum for people who like to use the piccolo. And I learned that according to the manufacturer, according to the designer of this, of the uh, Fatip razors, the handle is what tells you the model of the razor. And I didn't know that. With most razors, it's the head that kind of tells you. And then the handle is just, you pick whatever handle you want. But if you've got the fat handle that's hollow, you can usually see a, a hole down through the middle, then that is the grande. If you have the thinner one that's solid, that's the piccolo. And that's the model of the razor that you're using. That's interesting, huh? So you've got an open comb piccolo. You've got closed comb piccolo. You've got, and the same with the, the grande handle. All right, what have we got? Oh, hey, yeah, let me rinse. I've got some Barrister and Man Cool as my post shave. All right. Now, sometimes these little Barrister and Man samples, uh, they don't age well. And so, once you open them, just use it all up because it'll evaporate the next day. And hopefully, they'll good. It's all nice and blue. Good scent. And this, as you can imagine, see how blue it is, is that kind of classic aqua velva type inspired shaving scent after shave. This has lost a little bit of its zest from just sitting around, but still very nice. Now, if you put on your aftershave and you want a little bit more oomph, then you can uh, put some on the back of your neck. If it's especially if it's lotion, you could put some on your forehead here. This alcohol is might do my do my, my oily forehead a little benefit. And then now you've got some more some more scent floating around. Yep. Oh, that's just refreshing and nice. It does have some floral pieces to it, but those are so well integrated into the other parts. The it's so interesting. I'll bet if I were to look at the scent notes, the scent ingredients that make up this scent, I would just have no clue that it would come and gather together to smell like what it does. And I, I really enjoy it. I like the soap on this one too. All right. And I just took a look at the closeness. It's always good on my cheeks. Feels great. But where I look is right here. It's right next to my Adam's apple. There's not a lot of supporting underlying body structure. It's easy to, it's a hollow right there. And so um, that took me a few months, maybe even six months in the beginning of my shaving with this type of shaving to nail down the right approaches because the hairs also kind of do some swirling in that area. So that made everything just extra difficult to, it was very frustrating to try to find the right approach to get it because I can't go against the grain almost always I can't do that because it just uh, gives me nicks and things like that but this little razor easily I don't see any tips looks great I'm really happy with the closeness there now a uh, quick word about these mild razors what makes a razor aggressive is here is the top cap side view of the razor here as if you were zooming in on this portion right here top cap base plate and my toothbrush is going to be the blade okay so if you can draw a line from the top cap the highest point of the top cap across to the top point of the solid bar, safety bar, and then the tip of the blade edge there touches it, then that is a neutral exposure blade. There are a few of those out there in the world. If 
it sticks out more then you've got a positive exposure whether it sticks out just a tiny bit more or a lot more it's a positive exposure razor and in the inverse is if it's recessed any amount past that perfect flush it's a negative exposure razor now just because it's recessed doesn't mean that it's not going to cut you very well because it all depends on where the where everything is where is the top cap come into play where is the base plate that sort of thing but why I say that is if it's got some exposure to it to where here's kind of a neutral but then there's a positive exposure there then your angle that you can shave at might be something like this anywhere in this angle or let's see, let's pretend this is a vertical and this is my face. So anywhere from here to here, you're going to cut and uh, be able to shave. Well, if you recess that to even neutral, or it's still positive, but it's only a little positive, then that angle, all of a sudden, maybe you can only shave between this kind of uh, range. And that's what happens with mild razors. You have a smaller range smaller acceptable angle and with some people they get bad shaves because they don't take time to find that angle now with me it's always been easy with the tech I listen for the sound of the hairs being cut I feel uh, when I if it's too smooth and then I know there are hairs there I'll adjust my angle I'm exaggerating it right now but that's basically what I do at a, a micro level until I hear it cut the best it can and then I know I've got the right angle uh, and I feel it cut the best it can um, or I guess what I should say is I feel it and I hear it cutting the most hair. There you go. So, um, this little guy, pretty cool. The, uh, super stainless does great. Wouldn't have a problem if I was uh, stuck somewhere having to use those blades and I think they're pretty inexpensive. So, got a nice bout, a nice group of expensive gear and and that lather was perfect. I mean, it just felt great. It was well hydrated, slick, wet, almost drippy, but not quite creamy, luxurious. The rinses felt terrific. It's a luxury spa-like experience for a dollar a month. And that's 30, 31 shaves, <laughs> 31 spa experiences per month, right? Now, there are a few disadvantages to shaving like I do with the really hydrated lathers, uh, with the bowl. One, you have a bowl to clean up at the end of the shave. Now, to me, that's not really uh, a negative, but for some people it is. A little extra. It's not as simple. Uh, takes a little bit of time. But biggest drawback, perhaps, that I do also, I do experience is using so little product means that the scent is not as strong and as I think back I I did smell the black cherry scent but it was very light like a three or a four out of ten and so it was there it was present but I really wish I could have enjoyed it more with some more strength and it's possible that a heavier load uh, a drier lather uh, could have given me that but then it wouldn't have given me that often awesome performance that I just had. It was just perfect this time. So uh, I'll probably won't get a tub of the wild cherry just because the scent it would be nicer if it was just a little stronger. Um, but um, anyway, so tech, great job you. And again, like I said, I I do not stop in the middle of the shave and wish that the head weight was different than it is it once I start the shave it and uh, and also because the the head there it's okay that it's a little heavier because the drag as you're pulling it across your skin just at that minuscule amount of drag offsets that slight head focus to the weight and that's why I don't even notice it at least that's what I believe however the charcoal goods everyday razor that I tried a day or two ago with that um, well, a few days ago with that maze handle, it's a shorter handle and that head is really quite clunky. That was way too head focused and I did 
notice that and not enjoy it during the show. So we'll go to cleaning parts. Now the tech is nice in that this post here is not all that tall on just about all the other modern razors especially. This post is another maybe four millimeters high. And but what this that what that comes into play, how what kind of benefit that is, is you can travel and that that doesn't stand out too much. You can get one of those uh, spearhead makes these cases where you put this in one compartment, you put the the handle like in another compartment, and then there's another space for blades or something. And then you fold flaps over and then snap it, and it's easy to travel with. So this, as you can see, is kind of a low profile, and that's really neat. So I'm a big fan of the Tex, and like I said, they have been shaving all manner of beards for decades. And so when a person says, I tried the Tech and it was too mild for me, that tells me a couple of things. That tells me maybe they, number one, didn't bother to try to find the right angle or they couldn't find the right angle uh, it also it could mean that they really lay a lather on thick and when you do that you the thickness builds up and so your your razor isn't able to get as close to the skin and so you need more of an exposure to that blade to a more of an aggressive type head to eat through that micro thin but relatively speaking we're talking about shaving thick layer of product and i don't have that thick layer and people like me don't when they use a nice thin hydrated lather like i had today i am i'm enjoying the classic scent of the barrister and man cool i think we're good i think we're good so sterling, an excellent value, as we have mentioned. Williams Mug Soap is an excellent value. I have found two grocery stores in my locations that sell it for $1.30, and I easily got 60 shaves out of one puck of soap. So that's pretty good. The Arco Sticks are pretty good, especially if you buy them in bulk to save on shipping, unless you happen to find some kind of free shipping option. I like the Williams lather a little bit, a lot better because it's creamier. It just takes more work to get to that point. Arco doesn't take as much work, but it's not as, as good of a lather. Um, those are inexpensive options, but really, I mean, Sterling, you got a whole big old load of scents to choose from, and it's roughly a dollar a month. That's really pretty cheap. Uh, there we go. Um, Stubble Buster is made by Grumatorium, the same people who make Chiseled Face, and they are an inexpensive soap. Their problem is that the scents are very light, and so if you like medium and heavier scents like I do, then that brand's not going to do much for you. But if you like mild scents, then man, the performance is great on that base. They are taking a lot of popular colognes and making versions of those. And, uh, and I think I mentioned the price, uh, the base, the price, uh, the, the scents are, you know, wonderful inspired cologne type scents. It's just that they're rather weak. However, the aftershaves from Stubble Buster are not weak. They are normal strength, com comparable to things like Sterling and, and those guys. Uh, so that's a good budget soap. Um, another budget soap, Stuff You Buy Used on the shave bazaar or buy sell trade parts of different shaving forums out there that's the bargain right there and that's what i do a lot of okay hopefully you guys have been able to glean something from this shave i wanted to give another example of some cheap uh, cheap priced gear now it doesn't cost very much to buy some of the soaps i've been talking about to uh, the, the brush I had, I told you about the price of the brush and the razor and the soap. But right now, Maggard's has this like $29 deal on their basic starter kit. Normally, I think it's $40. But that is the deal. 
even at $40. That's a great deal because you get a big old tub of soap from Through the Fire Fine Craft, which is the people who make Maggard's house brand. Nice, nice soap. I just finished testing some samples of that. They were kind of ladylike scents for me, but they the performance was terrific. I tried the London Barbershop, the Groves of Italy, and I don't remember the other one. Um, excellent performing soap. The It comes with a synthetic brush, which I don't like because they're too springy, but most people really enjoy the synthetic brushes. Low maintenance. Comes with a, a razor that is um, kind of a clone razor. The handle will be stainless steel but the head will be that DE89 type head that is so popular. And it is a Zamac head, but you're paying Zamac prices. It's not like a Muley or a Mercure where you're getting a Zamac product, a pop metal product at premium-ish prices. Um, and so with Maggard, you're getting a fair price for your, your goods there. And so the, the razor, brush, soap, and some blades, that's just a terrific price, even at the full price for that starter kit. All right. So if you're a new shaver, uh, that's a great way to go. No, uh, noble otter, I think, and Sterling. I know that Sterling, yeah, Sterling is one I'm specifically thinking about also has some good kits as well. I'm just a little bit less familiar with those. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I think we're done. You guys take care and have a good night.